Japan's bombing of Pearl Harbor, Hawaii in 1941 thrust the U.S. into World War II. Immediately, suspicion was cast onto the 120,000 Americans of Japanese ancestry, and hostility flew at them from every front. I was living in San Francisco, Japanese town. There were U.S. soldiers. They were armed, and they were facing into Japanese town. The Selective Service labeled Japanese Americans 4C, the codename for enemy aliens, barring them from being drafted and serving in the U.S. military. Many of those already in the service were discharged. Enemy alien, the, the majority of them that were declared that were citizens. <clears throat> and, and so those two things are contradictory. Then, on February 19, 1943, Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, one of history's greatest injustices. This began the incarceration of thousands of Japanese Americans, mostly on the West Coast, in shabby, remote internment camps around the country. The order cited protection against espionage and sabotage to justify their imprisonment, despite the fact that many of them were Nisei, or American-born citizens whose parents were immigrants. We saw these signs on the telephone pole, and it was saying that we would be taken, take what you could carry. Their only crime was sharing the face of the enemy. Yet they went peacefully, enduring the struggle with dignity. That is the most direct manifestation of, of the discrimination against Japanese. But many refused to be defeated, rising above their struggle to answer the nation's call to arms and defend the very people who would not defend them. In October of 1944, the 442nd Regimental Combat Team, a segregated army unit made up of Japanese-American soldiers, triumphantly rescued 200 U.S. troops in France during the Second World War. These men were loyally fighting for a country that tragically distrusted and discriminated against them. The majority of the population at that time in Hawaii was Japanese American because a lot of the immigration. Japanese Americans in the Hawaii National Guard could not be discharged for legal reasons, so the U.S. Army decided to create a Hawaiian battalion, consisting of these soldiers and others who were reassigned from other army units. This unit, designated the 100th Battalion, would gain a reputation as a fierce, courageous fighting unit. Hawaii Nisei, who were not already serving, were outraged that because of the 4C designation, they were being denied the chance to serve their country. Many sought to help through manual labor, while others petitioned the government for the right to join. Some within the internment camps also desired to join the fight. Several coordinated petitions and organizations demanded the government allow them to join the military. Through their persistence and the support of several ranking officials, they finally got their chance to serve. The 442nd Regimental Combat Team was formed on February 1st, 1943. When it was announced, over 10,000 men volunteered most of them being from Hawaii, with about 1,200 from the mainland camps. The soldiers quickly earned the respect of their leaders through their outstanding effort and dedication. After months of intense preparation, the Nisei soldiers were finally sent into combat with the 5th Army in Italy. In May of 1944, they joined the 100th Battalion, which was proving to be a force to be reckoned with. Upon the 442's arrival, the 100th was attached to the larger regimental combat team. In the fighting in Italy, almost from the, you know, from the beginning, they proved themselves to be a very effective uh, fighting unit. In September of 1944, the 442 was transferred to the 7th Army to assist with the offensive in France, setting the stage for their most triumphant yet tragic moment in combat. After resting in September, the soldiers learned that they would be joining the 36th Texas Infantry Division in one of France's deadliest battlegrounds, the Vosges Mountains. A very inhospitable terrain. Uh, it's a kind of the forgotten campaign of, of World War II. The Nisei journeyed north in the early days of October towards the dense and deceptive forests of the Vosges that were crawling with landmines and Germans. Their mission was to liberate the small town of Bruyères, which was being held by the Germans. The weather was cold and wet, making for a bleak and unpleasant time for the soldiers. The Nisei faced heavy resistance from enemy tanks, artillery, and infantry as they fought to take the hills surrounding the village. The Germans utilized World War I trenches and previously planted landmines to stop the 36th. Once the 4,000 people of Bruyères had been rescued and the heights around the town were secure, the 442 turned its attention to Bifontein, another German-held town nearby. Intense fighting ensued in the days to follow, with each side battling to take and hold the many hills. Bifontein was captured on October 23rd, and the 442 took the next few days to rest in defensive positions around the area. Then, on October 24th, the Nisei received an alarming message. The 141st is in a firefight. 
It seems to be a counterattack. Keep close contact with them, as it may involve you. The Germans had surrounded their first battalion, cutting off the road behind them. And Hitler passed down the order to take no prisoners. We're going to kill them all. The trapped soldiers had set up roadblocks and defensive lines, hoping to fend them off. They were ordered to fight their way out, but it was no use. The battalion had become lost. Two attempts were made to rescue them, both failing. On the 27th, 36th Division Commander Major General John Dahlquist ordered the 442 into action. To reach the trapped soldiers, the Nisei attacked abreast. Advancing under the cover of darkness, the 442 needed to break through the German lines and hike through the forest before it was too late. As their attack continued on the 29th, hidden snipers, tanks, and mortars slowed their progress and claimed American lives. Companies I and K, leading the 3rd Battalion, were the first to encounter a German roadblock. To their right, the 100th Rifle Companies found themselves in a skirmish with German infantry. 442 artillery began to fire d ration chocolate bars to the Lost Battalion. As the Nisei advanced on the morning of the 29th, a desperate General Dahlquist ordered the 442 to push forward at all costs. Soon, 3rd Battalion faced its deadliest obstacle yet. A hill stood in the way of them and the Lost Battalion, with machine gunners and artillery firing down on them. There was one of the members that, that said, we, we're not going to break through unless we do something crazy. So the they did the bonsai charge. They just stood up like crazy men and started running forward. There was just, it was open fields of fire shooting down on them. Charging with bayonets and grenades, the 3rd Battalion broke through the enemy roadblocks and found a way up what would later be called Bonsai Hill. Next to them, the 100th attacked through a deadly minefield and broke through several enemy lines. Nearby, 2nd Battalion conducted another gallant charge up Hill 617 to sweep the area of enemy troops. Through the battle and throughout all of the war, the Nisei gave everything they had. For many, it was their lives. They lived out the motto of their regiment, Go for Broke. October 30th, 1944. All that separated the 442 from the Lost Battalion was a single ridge. They advanced quickly, fighting off the few Germans that were left after the previous day's battles. At 1400 hours, advanced patrols from the 3rd Battalion reached the trapped soldiers. As they approached, the men from Texas did not see Japs. They saw American heroes. Many wept as the Nisei offered them cigarettes and evacuated them through the afternoon. They didn't view it as a defeat. They viewed it as their proudest day of battle because they'd proven that they could do what no one else did. The most obvious tragedy of the rescue was the tremendous amount of casualties suffered by the 442. 215 soldiers were killed in the battle, with many others wounded. They lost more men than they had saved. Yet there were deeper tragedies than death. The very fact that the Nisei were forced to rescue the Lost Battalion in the first place, and their lack of public recognition, showed the discrimination against them. General Dahlquist thought these are just Japs. They were a tool, but they were an expendable tool. Whenever the Nisei soldier did anything that would be put in the paper, they withdrew them before they would get credit for it. And while the Nisei fought to free their white brothers in arms, the country they fought for was still holding their friends and family captive. Basically, it was pretty miserable. All the government gave us was the army cots, army blankets, and a pot valley stove. All the showers and toilets faced each other. The U.S. began to release Japanese Americans as early as 1945, recognizing the horrible mistake that had been made. The bravery shown in the Vosges and throughout all of the war proved that the Nisei were truly Americans. The 442 would later become the Army's most decorated unit. Japanese Americans in the 100, 442, Military Intelligence Service, and Women's Army Corps would serve in every theater of World War II. None would desert. Why do you want to go all out for a country that imprisoned your family? To show the country that you're worthy of being considered an American. But many of the Nisei citizens persecuted had been born and raised in America, and no Japanese Americans were ever convicted of aiding the enemy. I thought we proved our loyalty by going into the camps without causing problems. So why are they question our loyalty? Never again can we imprison an ethnic group because of their origins. Never again can we question the loyalty of Americans because of their ancestry. Never again can we punish innocent people because they look like our enemies. Through the tragedy, the 442 triumphed, and as President Truman said, they won the fight against prejudice. And although that fight is still not over, Japanese Americans showed that we can prevail through their undying devotion.